Hello, and welcome to Conversations with Nick Thompson. You may know me from Netflix Love is Blind, but on this podcast, we sit down with guests from all walks of life to hear their stories, remove stigmas, and understand what makes them tick. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Conversations with Nick Thompson. I am your host, Nick Thompson. This week, I've been thinking a lot about how I can become healthier, improve my overall well-being, become more self-sufficient in some of the products that I use and the food that I eat, start cooking a little bit more. And it got me thinking back to how this journey started for me. It started with making my own toothpaste, which a lot of you who know me from Love is Blind already know that I've made my own toothpaste for a number of years. What that really started for me was this rabbit hole of exploring and doing my own research into things that we use every day that we have really no idea what the ingredients are, any chemicals, what's good for us, what's bad for us, even though it's all been FDA approved. And so I started looking into my toothpaste after a recommendation from a friend many years ago, and there were things like tricoslin, artificial sweeteners, artificial sweeteners linked to cancer, tricoslin causes irregularities in hormones. And then even fluoride has a number of studies that show the negative impacts it has on cognitive development in children and the types of impacts it can have when um, ingested regularly for humans. So as I started looking into this, originally it sent me in this rabbit hole of every day trying to figure out how can I be more holistic? How can I become more self-sufficient in the products that I, I consume? Um, and the food that I cook. So after learning about all of these chemicals and toothpaste so long ago and how they are linked to things like cancer, they're linked to things like cognitive challenges, they can impact your hormonal balance. Like these are all things that can not just impact you day to day and long term, but they can actually really cause issues within your body that you may not even realize are happening there. And so when learning about the chemicals and toothpaste, I started investigating different options, um, of how I could make my own because at the time there weren't really that many natural toothpastes or organic toothpaste that you could buy in the store. It was all pretty much Colgate or Crest and then pick from a selection of products there. For eight years, I was primarily using this homemade toothpaste. And as some of you may know, I have made my own soaps, my own body washes, um, a lot of my own condiments and some of the other fun things that I've done. Um, such as as kind of making my own like recipes for food and really removing a lot of the bad ingredients and the preservatives and the things that can cause irregularities in your body. So when I came to my conclusion that I was going to make my own toothpaste, which was prompted even by a friend of mine who was saying, you got to look into this stuff. Um, I started using one part baking soda, one part coconut oil, and then essential oil to taste. And I've been using this now for eight years since about 2014. And what happened was I started noticing my teeth got brighter. And to be honest, like at first it burned a little. And then I noticed after a few weeks, my teeth were getting brighter. And I also noticed like my mouth was staying a little bit cleaner. It felt cleaner. I guess I don't know if it was actually cleaner. It felt cleaner. I would go to the dentist and I wouldn't really say anything. And they would say, keep doing what you're doing. Um, no cavities. Your teeth look great. Um, and I have had cavities, so I'm not going to say I haven't had cavities, but there was no, no issue when I would go to the dentist. And I also started oil pulling with coconut oil and I'm not good at flossing. So I'm going to put that straight up flossing. I hate it. I now have a water flosser. I do it a little bit more. Um, but I, I like oil pulling with coconut oil. I, I like using my, uh, toothpaste that doesn't have any harsh chemicals in it and, you know, another story for another time is how this like really opened my door into doing all my own research that led me to start making a lot of my own products and start really investigating the types of products that I, I can't make myself that I purchase for use in, in my everyday life. What we put into our bodies and specifically our mouths in this case is very important. That's how I came to the guest we're going to have today. You probably don't know her. She is not someone you would see on TV. She's not someone you would see on YouTube. This may actually be her first podcast interview that she's ever done. 
But uh, Leslie Guevara reached out to me 10.38 p.m., the night of Love is Blind airing where the toothpaste scene came up. And she reached out, said she loved the show, loved me on the show, and couldn't believe that I made my own toothpaste and asked if I was interested in trying her toothpaste. Her toothpaste is 100% natural, organic, and she runs a small business where she sells this online through her Facebook page and her website. She's also FDA approved. Leslie asked me if I'd be interested in trying her product. She sent me a DM and somehow I saw it. And at the time, which is, it's crazy because you literally, I went from 343, I think it was, Instagram followers and going on Instagram once every couple of days to post a picture of my dog maybe or do nothing but scroll. Um, so I'm not a big social media person. And then going from 343 to hundreds of thousands, essentially in two weeks, um, you know, I missed a lot of DMs. I didn't even really know what to do with them at first, but I happened to see Leslie's and I was very skeptical of this toothpaste because even the natural ones that you buy in the store now, and there's much, m- many more options now, even the natural ones in the store now, they all have some form of a chemical or some, something that's not good for you and foaming agents or whatever it may be. So I was expecting this to be, you know, a little startup company and, and one of those, and those are, those are okay. They're better than, than some of the other, uh, larger toothpaste on the market, but she had a seven ingredient recipe in this toothpaste. And I was familiar with all of the ingredients, but I didn't understand if it was legit. I didn't really know if these seven ingredients, which by the way, three of them are ingredients I use. So the baking soda, the essential oil and the coconut oil are all ingredients in her recipe, but she had four more that I was not familiar with in toothpaste. And so I, I drilled her, like we got on the phone and I, we sent some DMS. Leslie's focus on oral health and how it continues to contribute to your overall immunity and your overall health, not just when you're brushing, but post brushing and throughout the day and how each of these seven ingredients have specific reasons and benefits for your oral health, I was interested in trying it. So Leslie sent me, I, she has two flavors, peppermint and spearmint. She sent me one peppermint to try and then a, a larger tube of spearmint because I prefer the taste of spearmint. And so many, so many of these DMs, I happen to find this one. I happen to respond to this one. I happen to meet a new friend out of this one. So as we started talking, she was so authentic. She was so patient. She would check in, see what I thought, check in, see if Danielle had tried it and what she thought of it. And I have to tell you, like, I was impressed. I wasn't just impressed with the toothpaste and and how I felt using it, but I was impressed with her story, how she discovered these ingredients to make this toothpaste how she came all together when she took the leap to actually turn this into a business because it wasn't a business idea. And we're going to talk about that later today. It's a very powerful story that she tells, but she was so authentic and patient and answering my very detail oriented questions because I had been using my own toothpaste relatively successfully now for a number of years. So for me to make that change and jump into a new product, I really wanted to do my due diligence. So as she was so authentic and she explained what each of these ingredients do, how they come together, I tried it for, I think it was a month or so, maybe five weeks with that first supply. And I immediately noticed things like my mouth stayed fresher, longer. I really noticed that I never really felt like I had bad breath. And I asked Danielle that too. And she said, I, don't have bad breath. I felt like my mouth stayed cleaner longer and I never felt like it burned. And that to me was a very, very telltale sign. I noticed my teeth getting whiter again. And ultimately I was kind of sold. And I talked to Leslie when I was starting this podcast. I'm like, I really want you to come on and tell your story. And by the way, this is not an ad. Today we're going to hear her story and how 
true Eden toothpaste derived from a personal, very personal experience. We're going to talk about her journey. We're going to talk about oral health. We're going to talk about big toothpaste. We're going to talk about her experiences as a registered nurse. And we're going to talk about everything she's learned in her life about overall health and well-being from being a nurse, her story, and creating True Eden. So I hope you find this story as personal and impactful as I did and that you appreciate the vulnerability she's going to share and also all of the conversation we're going to have around oral health, how it contributes to overall health, big pharma, chemicals in our food, chemicals in our products like toothpaste, and how they can all impact your body in positive and negative ways depending on what we do with them. So with that, let's get to it. We're going to go meet Leslie. Welcome to our interview with today's guest, Leslie Guevara. She is a registered bone marrow nurse, mother of four children and grandmother of another five, very proud grandmother and mother. And she's the creator of True Eden Toothpaste, a natural toothpaste that we're going to talk about today. She's a new friend of mine, made in the last few months. Yes. Welcome to the show, Leslie. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. How are you today? Uh, excited because I'm here with Nick Thompson, so I'm super excited because oh I'm passionate about what we're going to be talking about today. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so happy that you agreed to come on, too. I know this isn't um, necessarily something you're accustomed to, but I thought um, when we met, you had a really cool and powerful story, uh, and the way we met's funny, too, so I thought it'd be good to share that with the audience. Yeah, that'd be fun. All right, so I'm going to start us off here with some small talk questions just to kind of break the ice. So first one, what TV shows are on the top of your list right now? Um, anything related to Marines. My son just joined the Marines. He's in the middle of boot camps. I've been watching like Recon on Amazon. Uh, definitely rom-coms. I love rom-coms. <laughs> the Thor movie. And that was kind of romantic and funny. So that was on the top and that was super awesome. And I went to watch that with someone real awesome. So it was, it was fun. It was fun. That's cool. And congratulations on your son. Um, you. You, you sent me a text about that. Uh, did, did I understand that right? Did you participate in a boot camp activity? I sure did. Actually, in about 250 years since the Marine has been in existence, uh, no recruit has ever been inter interrupted during the training. And this was an exception. So it was an honor and it was a oh, uh, wow. educator's workshop. So Oops. inside of being a registered nurse, I'm now in education as well. So that was uh, oh. amazing experience. What did you have to do? in the boot camp? Uh, it was kind of like mini honorable uh, Marine stuff <laughs> to our ability, to our level. We did get to uh, shoot some of the rifles and like repel and uh, do a lot of the activities and some kind of critical thinking, you know, do or die type of things. Gave us an idea what these uh, amazing heroes, I call them the Avengers, go through and all the branches are just so phenomenal so it was a wonderful experience we'll segue back to the the rom-coms when you're watching your favorite rom-com or marine show do you prefer popcorn candy or something completely different it's gotta be popcorn it's gotta be popcorn ice cream too but popcorn i also make my own kettle corn uh oh. popcorn uh what was your favorite class in high school I want to say it was uh, not PE. Um, I would say biology. I liked biology. I did skip a lot of school. <laughs> I played hooky. But when oh, I boy. did go to school, it was, I know, it was biology. Just loved it. Uh, not realizing I would end up getting into, you know, the sciences and, and stuff like that. What did you want to be when you grew up? Um... I wanted to be a veterinarian. I love animals. I mean, I've got three chihuahuas and a bearded dragon, and but then it transitioned to humans. So I'm passionate about humans. Who would have thought, right? Right, right. What's your favorite thing about humans or what's that passion that draws you to them? I think their hearts. I saw a lot of sick people, a lot of hurting people. I've held people's hands as they were dying and they tell you, um, you know, the most deepest things, the vulnerable things. And I just fell in love with humanity. Crest or Colgate? 
depending. Or, or neither. <laughs> I guess I <laughs> I grew up with neither for me, but I grew up using Kobo. But we had a divided household, one of each. <laughs> now that now that you're here, um, a little bit of background. You reached out to me pretty quickly after Love is Blind aired. Um, I believe it was February 22nd. I'm not 100% sure, but it was um, after seeing that I make my own toothpaste. And that was obviously aired on the show. And something that I had been doing for a very long time. So I'm curious, what, what is your journey as someone who now not just makes your own toothpaste, but has codified a business out of making a natural toothpaste? Like, how, how did that happen? What, what happened with Leslie that led you here? Oh, my gosh. They say that necessity is the mother of invention, Nick, and that cannot be far from the truth. It is so true. Uh, my daughter ended up getting gravely ill uh, from the age of five to nine. Doctors didn't know what was wrong with her. I took her to the best doctors here in the Texas uh, area, Dallas-Fort Worth area. And uh, she started with medications. Her immune system dropped. Now this nine-year-old's up to seven medications, two were steroids and all these other medications. Then they wanted to add chemotherapy uh, pills into her uh, regime of medications. Uh, and of course, I'm a registered nurse. You know, anything you prescribe, definitely, you know, take it. It's for your health. But then I saw her health declining. She got to the point where now it was severe. They told me she had 25% survival rate. No parent ever wants to hear that, not even 50% or 75%. We don't even want to hear 99%. It's like 100% is what we want to hear, right? So that's when I actually panicked. Um, at this point now, they found out what she had, and it was a blood disorder, and it, all, it was all affected by a cyst that she had here in the sinuses, but now it started to go like to the brain area. And that's what got to become the 25%. So this girl missed so much schooling, her life, uh, you know, to be involved in with family activities. It was just, we lived in the hospital. It was just a very dark season for us. And the only thing, and at that time, I, I was a bone marrow nurse. And I remember for our uh, patients there, we give them a little concoction because once you take chemotherapy or even radiation, it just wipes out every cell that you have, even the good one, right? So uh, the first thing that's affected when your immune system, system drops is your oral cavity. People don't know that. Um, and actually the dirtiest area in the human body is the oral cavity. You know, you can Google it, see that research. What, can I, so can I ask they, why is it the dirtiest area? Is that in the whole body? Because there's thousands upon thousands of bacteria in our mouth because we're talking, we're breathing, we're eating, we're drinking, and we don't constantly have a clean mouth. Uh, so all that harbors in there, and because of the heat and moisture we have in our mouth, that's like the perfect uh, environment for bacteria and viruses and fungus and, and everything to start growing. So I tell people, this is dirtier than... The other end, mm. I'm, that's how bad it is. Right. Um, so uh, as that happened, now she had thrush. She couldn't eat. She couldn't drink water. Everything in her mouth was so infected. And I said, my daughter, she's dying right in front of my eyes. I can't do anything about it. But if I can just do one thing and have her enjoy a meal with us, you know, that was my thing. Because uh, at this point, I didn't um, didn't know how to stop this. And so... Um, that's when I started, uh, you know, kind of going back to, okay, Leslie, what did you learn, right? Um, and I began uh, remembering, oh, this is what we give our patients. A little concoction, we mix a couple of little things, we have them swish and swallow it so it can start coating all the area, so it can quickly heal the thrush. And that's how it was, but it's disgusting, it's horrible. So this nine little year old girl next to me, I do it for her and she'd want to, you know, like vomit. And I'm like, sweetie, I'm doing it with you. I thought clearly I can do something better. Right. So it's more palatable what were for the her and she's not gonna throw up. I'm sorry, I interrupted. What were the ingredients? Uh, what we have there, I don't know if I'm allowed to tell, but it did have some baking soda in it. It had some hydrogen peroxide. And the other one, since this was like 21 years, uh, no, since 2009, honestly, I cannot remember. Oh, that. But it was those ingredients that I started with. 
But then I started researching. Uh, we don't have, you know, now we have a plethora of information online. Back then, we didn't have all that information. Back in 2009, like there was, but there wasn't the same amount we have right. now. So I would go to the library. I'd use my computer. What are some natural herbs, maybe oils that would help, you know, start healing the bacteria, the, the thrush that she had there, the viral thrush. And that's how I started adding one ingredient, then the next ingredient. Right. And within three months, she healed. No, within two weeks, all the thrush was gone. And within three months, she was now able, like, her overall health, because then I got into the natural, the holistic, the, you know, all the non-conventional stuff. And I started seeing, wow, truly nature has given us so much to use. And now even doctors, even the hospitals, they integrate even stuff that are out in nature yeah. to help healing, you, you know? know what's... So uh, that's how all this started. And, and I had the... I don't know what you call it, the vitality, the, the oomph and to grit. say, wait a minute, there has to, something has to be the grit. Something has to be done. And what if, just what if I can do this? And it ended up happening. You know, she got healed, didn't think much of it. People at work were telling me, Leslie, your teeth look great because yeah. I am a coffee drinker so I. and I worked a night shift and all I did was sip, sip, sip coffee. So everyone had yellow teeth except me. So then I thought, huh, you know what? I'll just make it for my family and myself. And, um, you know, they still use it since 2009. <laughs> everyone, you know, my family, my close, close friends, you know. They, um, the hydrogen peroxide and baking soda thing is so interesting because I actually started gargling hydrogen peroxide when I had COVID in January of this year. And it was, yeah, it was because it, it's like, I know, and see, like you put this all together, but like, I know it has those like bacteria killing infection, killing qualities. And I had heard on, I can't remember which podcast I had heard on a podcast that it could be beneficial to use as like a mouthwash if you're sick. So interestingly enough there, and then the experimentation that started, how, how did you, since there wasn't a lot of information in 2009, how did you find these ingredients and these items that were going to help you sort of make this concoction? Honestly, I became a mad scientist. I really did in my own kitchen. I was so desperate for my daughter to to live. I know that sounds awful, but but that's the honest truth. That I emerged myself. I mean, I already had four kids mm. then in high school, and then the younger ones working full time. But I still made time um, and just started getting books, and I started reading. Well, what does you know, what, what do the mints do? What do, you know, do the coconut right. oil? I mean, I've heard of these things, but I'm not sure. So all my journey began researching. And then I found out something quite, quite interesting. One of the things that we did at the bone marrow unit is we would, you know, sometimes have our patients when their immune system drops, your acid and base. So you've heard of the mm -hmm. pH balance, right? Anytime my body is ill, it goes very acidic. And the key was, I want something to counteract that. So what I need to do is research on what is not acidic, but what is alkaline, so I can pull out the sickness. And all of these products that I use, the seven ingredients that I use here in the toothpaste are all, they're alkaline and they fight acidity, which is infection. I mean, that's how I was like, I, this is interesting. I mean, I have my notepads back from... Um, 2009 of everything I would write with the date and go, Oh my, I was, I tell you, I was a mad yeah. scientist. I remember uh, that people, my family back then would tell me, you're crazy. <laughs> what, what are you doing? Because I'm sort of disconnected for a little, just to find the cure of, if I can fix this, my goodness, we can fix many yeah. other things, you know? Yeah, so, and that was my journey. That's such a, I mean, thinking back to 2009, I think to 2014, when I started, making my own stuff. And I started looking into like, wait a minute, there's a lot of chemicals here that are not good for our bodies. They're not good for our, our minds. And 
I had the hardest time in the world finding information. <laughs> so five years before that, for you to, to have that rigor to go find that and experiment like that, it, it's really cool to see. And especially considering the impact that it was able to, to have on your daughter. Yeah, you know what, Nick? Uh, I The way I tell the story, it seems like it happened so quickly. It really didn't. But by before I even thought of making the toothpaste for her, um, I had bought about 100 toothpastes uh, all over the country. And, uh, I, and back then, you didn't have a lot of organic mm-hmm. toothpaste or much less some that say no fluoride, fluoride-free. So I even bought toothpaste from Canada. I bought toothpaste from the U.K., and I, on one toothpaste tube, I spent, ready, $98 for 16 ounces. And um, none of it helped. As a matter of fact, it made her brush worse. Um, so that's, and I get you, you, you said 2014, and you're trying to buy all these toothpaste that don't have all these chemicals that you can't even pronounce. And there's always a warning sign. I tell people, look what's behind your toothpaste. I have not found one person other than you to tell me, what does your toothpaste say behind behind it? They're like, oh, I never read it because we trust what, you know, social media tells us and, and we trust. But I tell people, don't just go by my word, research on your own. Become your own advocate for your health, right? And for the ones that you love. So it was, it was quite the journey for me. I was frustrated. I was throwing money away left and right. And sometimes, how can I say, sometimes the, what you end up inventing or creating doesn't come because you're looking for it. It comes out of a huge necessity. So you're either going to go out and get it or find it because there is a need for it. And it'll happen. I mean, if the passion is there, I always say, in in my experience, I call it when heaven meets earth, right? There's a big need here on earth, and and there's an open heaven, and bam, all you need is that will, that desire to go look for it. And you might just, you know, get what you're looking for, you you, know? Find what you're looking for. Yeah, you had a life at stake, so it was like, you know no choice. You, you had to take action. You had to do everything you could and, and try and help your, your daughter. Yes. You know, and I'm a huge advocate about, you know, our doctors or hospitals, you know, I, I'm a nurse, right. But there's some things where you have to sometimes also go on your own and say, okay, like kind of it, I, you almost feel like you're Dorothy. Like me, I felt like I was Dorothy and I come to a fork in the road and there's two yellow brick roads. Well, which one am I going to take? What, where am I going to go? They both look good and appealing. And it was really a risk for me to do that. So at this point, my daughter needed to have the surgery at MD Anderson to get that out. And I remember as I was doing this, you know, the toothpaste, and I saw a little bit of healing, like on the second day, I was like, oh my gosh, I think her thrush is healing. And everyone would tell me, you're just imagining things. This is, this is not. I'm like, no, I see it. I feel it. You know, because there's always going to be people that doubt, but they do it also because they care about you because it's never been done before. So there's no way this could happen. You've had diagnosis. It's affirmative. Why are you still trying to look for an answer? Because there are answers out there. We just have to be willing and desperate enough to go look for them and get them. Yeah, so let me ask. There's a couple things I want to get your take on. So first one is you're a registered nurse. You've gone through immense education and training in order to care for people, to understand medication, operations, bone marrow, all of this stuff. Did you, was there a moment where you had to, to say, okay, I've got to get out of my conventional way of thinking. And was that difficult or what was that experience like given that you were literally trained in this? All right. It was very difficult. Um, I remember telling I'm, um, uh, I'm not married. I'm single at the moment, but I remember I was married at that time telling my husband, then this is what I'm going to do. I'm going the non-conventional way. I've done enough research. I'm opting against that surgery because that would mean once they did that surgery, my daughter would never have taste or scent 
ever in her life because they had to take out that bone that creates and gives us the taste and scent because the, the cyst had grown so much that they had to cut it all out. And I said, I can't do that. I just, you know, this gut oh, feeling yeah. you have in there. I would tell people, maybe you're meant to follow it at times. <laughs> that was my time to follow that really strong gut feeling. So when I told him that, he said, um, you know, he's like, I'm going to divorce your you can says, swear. I, I'm done. <laughs> you're done. You're I don't know. <laughs> the problem is I don't really oh, swear, okay. but I'm going to divorce you. No. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. <laughs> and because you're going to end up killing her, what's going on. And I said, give me just two months. We don't have two months. I said, give me a month. And that's when all the magic happened. Oh, I was on my knees praying. I was like trying to get like the smartest people I know doctors, even the ones we call quacks. I mean, I put it all together. I didn't discard anything or anyone. And then that's when I started my critical thinking. I've got this information here. And that's what we do with evidence-based research. We get all the evidence that we can that is factual, not made up stuff, put it together, weigh it out and decide, okay, this is, you know, an evidence-based research. You know, I read so many scholarly articles. I mean, what did I not do? I, uh, I feel I need like another degree in research because <laughs> I, since till today, I am still a yeah. researcher. That's my passion in doing. So that's a great segue to my second question that I wanted to ask you. I have always been a do your own research question everything. If everyone's going left, why is no one going right? That's how I think much to my detriment sometimes, but I can't help myself, but to question everything. We live in a society right now that is saying, believe the science. And they're saying, don't do your own research, leave it to the experts. Do you have a thought or do you want to share anything on your view on, or any criticism that you have received for doing your own research. I know you elaborated a little bit, but it's funny because you did this in a month. You started seeing results in a couple of weeks and then in a month that conventional medicine had been failing for years. And also the fact that we have to call yeah. it conventional medicine when you're going back to nature, which was here before medicine. And that's, that's alternative total misuse of words, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> Yes, I've been, in, I've been uh, as a nurse, you're invited to go to symposiums and many seminars. And at one of the big hospitals here, which I love and I worked at um, primarily, um, I remember this, uh, you know, uh, oncologist doctor said, now we all know that chemotherapy and radiation, for the most part, buys time. Uh, because we all know, and we were just invited, the nurses were invited, these were all physicians, but we all know that the cure is in our backyard. Now, when he said that, uh, I wasn't even close to, my daughter was maybe six years old. She was already sick. I wasn't even, maybe six or seven, I wasn't even close to even thinking of making toothpaste because her thrush wasn't even mm -hmm. there yet, like really bad. When he said that, that always stuck in my head. It was like, you know that the cure's in the backyard. I, I, so I asked him at the end, I said, what did you mean are the cure to many things and even cancers are in the backyard? And he said, well, yeah. He's like the herbs and natural stuff, the things that were given to us. And he said this, our body is composed with all of these chemicals that the ground carries and has. I blew my mind. So it was like, I kept that in here, but I still did conventional medications and all that. Um, so it, it was difficult because a lot of my, you know, my coworkers, my peers, even doctors started seeing, you know, Leslie's um, talking so much about this. Uh, you know, when I would say, well, instead of just prescribing a medication, why don't we give them the alternative of teaching them how to eat and take care of their bodies? You know, we have two types of diabetes, type one, which you're born with it. I mean, it'll come back, you know, at the age of five, seven, maybe even your teens or young adulthood. And then, yes, you do need insulin. Mm -hmm. I see that, right? But there's type two diabetes that we give to ourselves. We give to ourselves so many problems, physical illnesses. Uh, the leading cause of death in America, for example, is heart disease. 
And it's not because it was congenital, which means they were not born with it. We caused it ourselves. So if we can educate people, that's why now I've transitioned into the education part of nursing. We can educate people on there are alternatives that I wouldn't even call them alternatives. It's just a, a way of changing the lifestyle, your sedentary yes. life. What you eat does matter. Uh, Whatever we put into our, our car matters how it's going to function. It's the same thing with our body. I, I agree completely. And this was all part of my toothpaste leading to uh, far more of what we put in our bodies and the impact it has on our uh, you know, physical appearance, our internal health, our mental health, it's all tied together. And I am, I'm not a doctor. You are actually a registered nurse. So you are far more qualified to, to speak than I am on this. But I notice personally that when I eat clean, when I take a integrated approach, I'm not saying there's no room for modern medicine. There, there is, they play a role, but if you stop treating the symptom and find and discover to treat the underlying problem, you're going to see much better results. And that doesn't mean that you can't indulge or you can't enjoy yourself or you can't take a day off of working out. But you have to have these things all working together because we're a machine. Our body's a machine and it needs everything to hit at the exact right moment to be, um, to be healthy. And I struggle to communicate these ideas with some people, of course, but I feel like there's this massive, massive, and it's only gotten worse recently, like massive control of information that does not allow people to actually do their own research. And there's also a lot of fake information out there. So I'm not saying that's not an issue too, but how do we, I mean, we can talk just, just even like Crest and Colgate and P and G or whoever makes them. There's so much propaganda about these big companies producing food, producing toothpaste, and just messaging it down our throats um, on the TV, on billboards, on our social media. How do you overcome that to like have a message that's more mainstream about just an integrated approach to your health and wellness? Well, I think there's passive and aggressive. We've heard of that, right? I don't, I, I teach my students, don't be passive, be aggressive about your education, be involved, want to know the whys. Like if I teach them to do a skill for nursing yeah. skill, right? I, and I tell them this, I can teach a monkey to do the skill. I said, I don't, monkeys will never understand the why, but you can. So I don't want to just teach you the skills. I want to teach yeah. you the whys. So one of the things that I tell even my own patients is ask your doctor why he's prescribing five new medications today. And then when they do, they find out, oh, well, two medications are for the disorder that we just found out you had. The other three are for the side effects of those two medications that you're taking. So at the end of two, two, to, two to five years, they're on 10 medications. And that's quite alarming because a lot of the times people are coming into the hospital, not because of the root problem, but because of the symptoms of all those little symptoms that the root, the medications are causing. So, and people don't realize this, digestion starts in the oral cavity. People don't know that. Why do we in healthcare give medications under the tongue or inside the cheek? Because boom, it absorbs differently. So when you're actually brushing your teeth, even with fluoride, fluoride, your thyroid is right here. So a lot of women and men have thyroid issues because what does fluoride do? It causes thyroid it causes issues. Causes thyroid yeah. problems. Well, I mean, you, I, you can talk about this, and you're passionate about the same passion that I am, and it's about clean, cleanliness, clean stuff. What's going to make us healthier? You know, um, again, everything has to be in moderation. You know, I love my <laughs> in and out. I love you know, you know. I do, but I don't do that all the time because like you said, when I eat clean, I feel clean and healthy. And when I don't, it's like, oh, popcorn, let me tell you, oh my gosh, and I'll be bloated. And that's why there's a lot of mm -hmm. gut issues, inflammation. That's why there's, I mean, Nick, back then we didn't have all the allergies no. we have now. 
have gluten allergies, lactose intolerance. We, that was unheard of. And now it's common. So maybe it's not, maybe it's the foods we're consuming, maybe the way they were uh, made. Or, you know, that's grown, another thing I can yeah. Yes, you know, it's just quite interesting. I'm just, I can go on about this. And, you know, like you were mentioning, I did have some people, even family members, um, kind of keep a distance from me. Because they thought, oh, now she's so weird now. She's not conventional. She's an RN. You know, because when they'd ask me, because for whatever reason, people think that they can call me at any time. And they can. You know, like family members and good friends, even at 2, 3 in the morning. What do I take? This is happening. What should I do? You know, or sometimes they'll say, I just tripped. Is my ankle broken? And I'm like, I'm not an x-ray vision and we're open the phone. Just go to the ER, right? But, you know, there's, uh, you know. People would say, you know, Leslie, everything you're telling me to do is not with medications. Right. And I'm like, correct. Let's try this first. Yes. If that doesn't work, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big advocate for medications when you need them. Absolutely. Why do we start with a medication that's a chemical as opposed to a piece of something from the ground or from nature that can literally because change what's happening in the body chemistry of your body for the better and naturally. Okay. So I don't know, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this big pharma. Oh yeah. Pharma. We, say, we say big pharma big on this show. Really. Yes. Yeah, so that is huge. It is a big money there. Um, and you know, FDA approved. I mean, I'm not even going to get into all that. But that is probably the main reason. It all boils down to the cha-ching, the coin, the money. What's making America Capitalism, run? baby. I, I don't think I told you. That's exactly it. And I don't think I told you. I went to Africa back in 2017 to do medical missions. And um, they didn't know what depression was, okay? Because I had my interpreter and I said, oh, I think she's going through like postpartum depression. And they're like, this was the nurse that was interpreting. She's like, what do you mean by depression? And I said, you don't know what depression is. So I explained to her, she's like, oh, she said, no, that is, oh my God, that is Western world illnesses that we don't have here. That, And, you know, although with, so, it, but they were telling me about a lot of things, anti-anxiety. I said, so you guys don't do anti-anxiety medication? She's like, no. <laughs> so I began to see, whoa, what is right. going on? My goodness. And um, so the people there were much happier, no medications. Um, you know, so it is very different than how we here in America view health. You, health does not mean take medication. I completely agree with you. I try to not take medication unless it's a last resort because I do believe that I can change my body for the better by what I consume and the activity I do. Um, I think big pharma has a death grip on this country. Uh, and the world, but really specifically this country. And I don't know if you are familiar with Noam Chomsky or if you've read Manufacturing Consent, which is no, not on my no, bookshelf right now. It, it's on the other there. side. <laughs> it's on my other bookshelf. So Manufacturing <laughs> Consent basically says that you create the problem for the solution you want to deliver. So SSRIs, I don't know if you saw that. Did you see that report? Yes. Okay. No, no, I didn't. It's no. like two weeks ago. It came, they reviewed all the research from SSRIs and wow. it showed there was no correlation between low serotonin and depression. And so we've been sold this lie, basically, that SSRIs are what's doing. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that they're not doing anything because they're doing something. They help a lot of people. I believe they save a lot of lives. But what are they doing? Why are we not studying that? What are we looking yeah. for if we don't know what? problem we're solving. Like I can't stand that. And so then I was talking a little bit about how now you have pharma who's selling you medicine for the problems created by the processed food that we have, the big propaganda machine of what we should and shouldn't eat. 
And then you have people doing their own research and they're getting completely shafted as some quack or kook or conspiracy yeah. theorists. And the reality is, is like we can't trust these institutions because they're also bought and paid for by pharma, by Bayer and Monsanto. And they're poisoning the food. They're giving you the yeah. poison food. And then after, not you. They're giving us the they're poisoning the food. They're giving us the poison food. And then they've got the, the cure for it. And it's always a pill. Yeah, so. that, that's true. I mean, it's if. If it would be that easy, health takes time. It is an effort. It is deliberate to have good health. You have to intentionally want to do it. It's just like if you want to get fit and maybe have a six pack, you have to do something about it, right? So if the, once they give you that quick fix pill, because it is temporary, um, be concerned. <laughs> you know, things like that take time. We didn't get there just overnight. So we're not going to get out of that overnight. It is a journey. It truly is a journey. I completely agree. And I feel like it is getting, I felt like it was getting easier and easier and easier to do your own research, find your own information on your own health and your own well being, and make your own decisions. And then COVID happened and there were so, so many people speculating on conspiracies that it like wiped out the narrative that you can, you know, research yourself. I'm not saying self-diagnose or self-prescribe. I'm just yeah, saying like correct. go in with an opinion. Go it like no one got really ridiculed for researching WebMD and finding that they have seven of the eight symptoms of something and then going to the doctor and being like, hey, I think I have the flu because I have seven of the eight symptoms. But now you're not allowed to do that kind of stuff. It's wild. Well, I think people think they're not allowed to do that. They don't think they can research on their own because they solely believe what, you know, the doctors tell them, what social media tells them. And, you know, that's okay. But do your research. Find out the right. why you need to take this medication. What side effects does it cause? I mean, is there something else that I need to do before jumping into a medication? I mean, all these things. I mean, now we have our children taking medications. Uh, one of the things that really discouraged me, I thought, well, maybe I should be a school nurse one day, right? Uh, when they told me all the medications I would have to dispense, and I said, wait a minute, I'm not in a hospital. <laughs> these are kids. That's why I wanted to thinking of going into, you know, school nursing, Yeah. all the medications. I was, I was blown away by that. I was like, what are we doing to our, our kiddos, the next generation? I mean, when we're you prescribing. Know, correct. Where you don't need it, you know, just have them play more, be active more, drink water. If people only knew how important water is. Even that going feeds your cells, you yes. know. It's all about the cells. What are we feeding our cells? Are we breaking down the wall of our cells? That's why things are easier to get in. And now we're morphing our cells and now, now they're turning into cancers, you know? So all of these things, I mean, and, and guess what? They can get all this information with the push of a button online. Yeah. It's all there. They just have to be willing to research it, you know? And I think that's what, that's what happened to me. I said, I'm going to become a, I'll become one of those weird researchers and I love every bit of it. Yeah. Because I'm aware and, I'm, and I let my family members know, you know, again, I'm not discarding all of, you know, the conventional stuff. No, no. there's but a place for it. Want. Yeah, there is a place. For it. And there's a lot that I'm going, this is not right. So now it's about reeducating people. Let's get back to our roots. You know, back then, our great grandparents, they didn't take all these medications. No. If any. I asked my mama, did grandma take medications? You know what she told me? My mom is South American. She said, well, when your grandma moved to America at the age of 65, I think, she started taking medications. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my goodness. Sounds prior about to, right. Prior to that, she never took it, super healthy. But she went to a doctor's appointment, and they said, let's just fix this a little bit better. And I'm like, oh, no, let your body do the stuff, you know. Anyway, there's a lot to unfold here. Let me tell you. It, uh, I know. Frustrating, but, you know, if I can just have one person here, I, here and listen, not what I have to say, but what there is, the research that's there telling you, you know, this, there's another route. Yeah. Why not? I, I, I'm satisfied with one person. That's why when you reach back at me, I was like, yes, because as soon as you mentioned on the show you make your own toothpaste. Literally, my ears perked up, and I went, what? I'm not the only crazy one here. That's exactly what I thought. I was like, oh, my gosh, there's more weirdos out. 
<laughs> well, that's the and that's the funny thing is like we're considered weirdos, but in reality, we are we're actually educating ourselves on what we're doing to our bodies. And by the way, like science is reviewing one another, right? Like it, it's peer review based. You can't one scientist or one doctor comes out and says something that does not mean that that is gospel. You need to get second opinions and form your own opinion by doing your own research. Because I'll tell you what, you go to that doctor, that medicine they're prescribing you, there's a kickback or a spiff for those of you in sales as to why there's, there's, prescribing you that one over another one. And it may or may not be because those are the symptoms it's going to treat. It may actually be because, yeah, this will treat the symptoms. Um, this one might give you more side effects, but I'm going to make a little extra dough. It is rigged from the top to the bottom. It is. I mean, I've, um, so hospitals work a little bit different than clinics. And I have, I had the experience of visiting certain clinics and first season I did that as part of a little, uh, job that I had. It was like, go to a clinic and see what needs to be fixed and go mm -hmm. and fix, help them fix it. Right. But what I noticed is that every week, every day they would have free foods in the clinics. Yeah. And I'm like, where are these free foods? Like good top foods. I mean, Maggiano's and you'd have these amazing meals coming over for all the staff. And it was from the farm, farm, pharma because <laughs> I kid you not. So every week, the person, the sales rep would come and say, hi, how are you? To the nurses, to the medical assistants, and even to the doctors, you know, make sure that your patients are having the medication they were selling or they were promoting. And if they did that, you know, every doctor that signs that prescription pad has a number attached, their doctor number. So they know, oh, good, he did his job. He prescribed this. See, people don't know that. I didn't this know is that. This clinic prescribed, keep feeding them. We got to feed. Let's do, you know what? Let's take him to a seminar to Greece for him and his family. He'll attend the seminar. I have seen it all. I'm like, maybe I should write a book on that. You should. It's like backdoor corruption almost. It's like, it's the way it all works. And there are ways to get away with it without having it look like a fraudulent thing. And, and people keep drinking the same Kool-Aid and I'm like, guys, wake up, look at this. You know, I'm very, again, I didn't promote or sell my toothpaste, Nick, mm -hmm. until 2020 came. Did I, I, I think I told you. You told me that. Yeah. yeah. So it's not like I was like having people here, buy it, try it. No, it works. It's amazing. It'll heal this and do that. Not at all. I kept it within my family and my close friends. And every time I'd make a batch, I'd give it to everyone. But when 2020 came and I lost my job as a nurse because all of elective surgery closed, yeah. I was home going, what am I going to do? I thought, okay, am I going to feel sorry for myself? Like I should have been a teacher is what I thought. Because teachers were still working, right? Yeah, I yeah. should have been a teacher. And that's when I said, no, I, if I can do this. But how crazy is that? People won't want, people won't want to try a different toothpaste. They're all used to Colgate, Crest, you know, Tom's, you name it. They're used to all those brand names. So what I did is I gave 100 out to strangers last year mm -hmm. just to get reviews of what they thought. And if I can tweak things, and I did. But when they started telling me, see, I didn't know that the toothpaste did this. But when they started saying my gingivitis is healed, the thrush I knew was going to be healed, that's healed. I've even had people tell me my cavities were reversed. I mean, wow. you name it, like, what on earth? And I was like floored by all that. So then again, I began researching more on all the even good organic toothpaste. You still read the back. And it is Homing not agents, all sorts of stuff in there. Yes. Yeah, so I tell people, please read behind your toothpaste. I'm not trying to sell people. I'm not a salesperson. I'm a, I'm a registered nurse. I'm a grandma, you know, yeah. I read because your absorption, it starts right here in your oral cavity. And so many people are using like the teeth whiteners and that is so, so, they are so good. bad for you. So bad. Now all the people that have used it more than three years have sensitivity to their gums and their root because it's weakening all that yeah. and they don't realize. And I'm like, no, please don't. So I'm so passionate about people trying more natural, you know, less is more. I more is worse. Agree. 
And if there's an ingredient you can't pronounce, you should not be putting it into your mouth. That's funny. Nick, I always say, look, if you can't pronounce it, or I tell people that ingredient that you couldn't even pronounce, plug it on Google and put next to it side effects. <laughs> put next to cancer. You You're... will see what comes up and you're going, wow, really? Yeah. I'm consuming that. And I'm giving my kids that every day, you know, because their little kiddos do brush their teeth, you know. Yeah. So, I'm, and, and I'm not just talking about toothpaste. I'm talking about the things we eat. Mm-hmm. Huge a drink. I'm like, ah, oh. it's all you know. of it, and it all it all comes together. So yeah, so I was, I was saying about researching the seven ingredients that I have, plug it in, and it'll tell you the healthy properties it has, the health benefits of restoration, and just getting rid of all that bacteria. Especially now we have something called mask face because we've been using the mask for so long. So Dennis got real rich in the last year and a half because so many people were using the masks Mm -hmm. and not even changing them, but just staying in that hostile environment is what I call it, right? And everything is just brewing in there and marinating and you're getting tooth decay, gingivitis, periodontitis. So, yeah, so all this toothpaste has, uh, people have told me, I'm sorry, my computer's doing something funny. People have told me that it has restored even the halitosis. Halitosis is bad breath because bacteria can cause halitosis. Even Mm. stomach issues can cause that. But even if you swallow my toothpaste, you you don't have a warning sign. You don't need to go to the emergency room or call the poison control. You can eat it and it's fine because we use all of these for cooking. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, isn't that wild? I mean, it's just crazy to me that you can put something in your mouth that you swallow and you have to call poison control. I never understood that. Yeah, but... you know, the toothpaste does tell you that in the back. Wow. And being, I've also done ER nursing, and the little customers we would have in the hospital, I call them customers, it, are the children that would suck up that delicious tasting toothpaste tube. And the first thing we ask is, what time did they, you know, consume this? Because we have four hours before it hits our systemic system. And once it does that, it's in your bloodstream. Now we're going to the ICU. So this is no joke, guys. I mean, toothpaste, consuming toothpaste that has that warning sign is, can be deadly. It'll poison your blood. So we start pumping their stomach with charcoal to get all that out. Uh, Charcoal is another like amazing tool that just people don't use a lot. I've been using it for Yeah, just binds all the bad stuff to the charcoal. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly right. So before we, before we move on here, last thing, would you, is there one lasting piece of advice you would want to give someone about their oral health or about just health in general, let's say? Well, this is what I tell people. If you're, if you don't feel, feel fresh after using your toothpaste, and it's 3 p.m., 4 p.m., your toothpaste isn't doing the job, okay? If you still have sensitivity to your gums and your teeth, if your teeth get uh, cakey, like at the end of, like not even, dinner's not even here, and you feel your teeth with all that crud and it's cakey feeling, then it's time to get a different toothpaste that has natural, uh, pure ingredients in there. I mean, it's very scary to pass that on to your children and not knowing that you have poison in a tube. And I, and I know this sounds harsh, but you really have poison in a tube. What I say is I have magic in a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> My bottle is BPA free and, uh, and also FDA approved, uh, because I don't want even things to seep from the bottle yeah. uh, or even the tube. So be careful with that also, right? Because if we have aluminum that's made in the tube, like people don't know all this, that is sucked into the toothpaste and you're brushing your teeth with that, you know? And uh, so, yeah, I mean, just just be careful. If what you're doing isn't working, then don't use it. Mm-hmm. Use what is working. Try the alternative, folks. I mean, and I'm here again. I told you, I'm not a salesperson. I'm just passionate about the toothpaste because it saved my daughter's life. And, it, and you know, my motto is change your smile, change your life, because it actually changed our life yeah. because my daughter survived. And, and then from there, that was my journey. It didn't, you know, it started with toothpaste and now it ended with all of these other things. You know, I, 
You know, I was that weird mom that my pantry was empty because I didn't have all those things in bags and boxes, you know, but I did have my fruits and I did have my veggies and I had some wholesome eating is what I call it. Right. Yeah. And, and it's true. You are what you eat. Very true. And just as a funny little side note to that, you didn't see this, but in my intro, I actually talked about the big thing I noticed about your toothpaste after I used it for a couple of weeks was my mouth always felt fresh throughout the whole day. Like it never feels like I have bad breath. Yeah. And you're not. Yeah. Old. And I, and I, I check too. Cause I'm like, am I, you know, it's, it's, it's yeah, different. Yeah. It really is different. And I, I was skeptical. I questioned you. I drilled you on the phone. I, dr I drilled you over DM before we got on the phone. And then I was like, I, I will try this. Um, but yeah, so thank you for what you're doing. I really, really appreciate it. And also, this is a tough conversation to have today. So I'm glad that you were able to have that with me. And this segment was brought to you by Pfizer. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'm on the wrong show. <laughs> <laughs> no, did you, did you see that? There's like this, this, um, this like viral video out there. And it's, I don't remember how long it is. It may be a minute. But it's like the clips of all the news segments over the last couple of years that have been paid for by Pfizer. And that's the thing. It's like this segment's brought to you by Pfizer. And then it's like CNN. And it's, yeah, it's like so corrupt. But you know, Nick, and I don't know that this will probably show, but just so you know, I don't know if you knew that it takes seven to 10 years to actually for the FDA to approve a medication. I do. And in that time, they tell them tweak this, tweak that, because in lab rats and even in people that volunteer to get this done, it did this and that. And then we have stuff come in right after COVID in less than a year, within a few months. Mm -hmm. And I've taken care of those patients. And that's that you don't see on the news where the side effects can, I mean, it's just pretty scary. It yeah. really is. And what, what we're consuming, what we're putting, what we're allowing to be put in our bodies and no one's forcing you, you know, it's just, we just kind of walk to our demise to the slaughterhouse yeah. without questioning it. And that's pretty darn scary. That's, it really is. That's the manufacturing consent. They make you want it. They put the fear of something in you and make you want to at, make you ask, they put the fear in you and then they make you ask for the solution that they're trying to sell you or give you. And it's very terrifying. And I'm going to probably get a lot of hate saying that, but it is what it is. Um, you know, and to your shows and like your show, uh, you know, the podcast, it's the awareness that you're letting people know. Yeah. And it takes guts to go against the current. Let me tell you, you lose oh. even <laughs> good friends doing it. Yep. I've and done it and it lost it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, and, it, and it hurts because you're like, I really was just trying to help people, right. you know, and let them see something. And, and in my field, it's like, I've seen in 20 years of being a nurse, boy, have I seen stuff. And, and I try to share with people what I'm, what I, what I'm, I, I don't want to say what I'm allowed to share, but what I feel would be appropriate to share. Yep. And other stuff, I'm still like floored going, I, I, I'm amazed and you know, people in my field know it, but we're like hush hush, you know, about it. Yeah, I know that's the part that, and I have had so many people reach out over the last few months, um, on social media through DMS to share things like that too. So it's, it's very unfortunate that we are in a free society that cannot have free thought against the narrative, whatever that might be. So, yeah. Yeah, well, on that note, let's, um, let's give you the opportunity if you have a question or two that you want to ask me, um, so you can ask me anything that maybe you haven't already asked. All right. I don't think I've asked you this, which I'm curious to ask is who is your biggest inspiration? Oh, that's a really good question. I would say I have a lot of people that inspire me for different reasons and in different pathways of my life. But, um, I have, oh God, that is a hard question. You know, it is because we have so many, I know. And I get really inspired by someone who stands up like you and I are against a narrative. Um, and that doesn't, that's not just politics. That's not just medicine. That's doesn't even have to be something I agree with, but it takes a certain kind of bravery to put yourself in a position for scrutiny. 
And for me, that means so many people are stronger than me and sharper than me and think differently than me. And that's kind of where I find my inspiration. Now there's again, specific people, um, you know, public people, personal people that inspire me in different ways. I also would say, um, you know, I get inspired. My grandma, she's been deceased for 12 years now. Um, but she was really an inspiration to me growing up because I was her favorite and any of my family that is listening to this, we all know it. I was grandma's (laughs) favorite grandchild and, um, she always believed in me and, she also was, was a hard critic. She did not like to see B's and C's on report cards, um, like things it. like that. But, um, she always believed in me and always knew I was going to be something. Um, and sometimes it was going to be a WWE wrestler, other times a filmmaker. Um, but she just always believed in me and yeah. always thought I was going to do something. Wow. That's, yeah. that's beautiful. I love that. And, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, I didn't expect that it would be a grandmother. Honestly, that's superb. That's beautiful. She's yeah, just a really, that, that, she was a really, really like good spirited person. And, yeah. um, she just always like, just always believing in me no matter what. And that was, uh-huh. that was like really helpful as a child and, and, even growing up, like I think back about her all the time and I'm just like, I wish she could see me, but, and I could thank her for it. That's right. I think you've got her genes. So that's <laughs> why you are, who you are. Yeah. And I think that's amazing. <laughs> you know, it's just one of the things I do tell my students is be a detective yes. or any, be the detective. Uh, because when you do that, you're screaming, you're looking, you're trying to see the bigger picture, you know, have that, you know, be in everything that you do. Like you were saying, it's not just with, you know, your health, but it's in everything. It bleeds through everything that you do. You're always trying to be the detective to see, you know, is this good? Is this, you know, am I safe? Or how can I help? Like me, I'm always looking wherever I go. I look where the exit signs and who looks suspicious and where can I help? Oh my God, me too. (laughs) Me too. (laughs) I always have to sit with like facing the door because you just never know. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, so so funny. Yeah, I guess there's a uh, um, there's uh, many more unicorns in there. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, yeah. right. Cool. Did you have any other questions? You want to do one? If you have, we could do one. No, one more. I yeah. I guess what maybe three things that you're at, you're real grateful for. I love that one too. So I am very grateful to have the opportunity to, well, one personally have conversations like we've had today. I, I wanted to start a podcast for 10 years and I never knew what about, and I never knew, um, really what direction I wanted to take. Could I have, could I put myself under the scrutiny of having these types of conversations? And, um, so I'm very grateful for the platform to have these conversations. Um, and that's, you know, getting ironically, and this is where I'm like, is life a simulation? I don't know. But for, for me, um, going on a reality show and finding my spouse is, it just seems like it's surreal. So, and so I'm grateful for that, for giving me this platform to have these types of conversations. And then number two, um, I am grateful for the friends that I have um, because I haven't always been super close with family and, um, you know, they live further away, but I have like six friends and they would move heaven and earth uh, to support me and and be there for me. And they've, they've been my family for a long time. And, you know, I keep my circle tight and they're, so hopefully they're listening to this, but, um, you know, I really appreciate them. They should know who they are. And then, um, of course I'm grateful again, the life, my life is, is literally just irony. It's like my life is just irony, but, um, not only going on a reality show, but of course meeting Danielle on a reality show and getting to meet someone that 
um, was able to be vulnerable in that situation and able to continue to be the person that she is um, outside of the show. And, you know, you wake up one day, and we were talking about this a little earlier, you wake up one day and all of a sudden you have a half a million Instagram followers in her case, and it's hard. And it's hard to stay a real person. So I'm um, just yeah. grateful for, for that too. Well, I think in, in just in the questions that I've asked you, <laughs> I see that you are all about people. I've noticed that. I That's am. That's beautiful. That's phenomenal. I love that. I, That's great. I really, truly believe that. And I grew up Catholic. And this is one thing my grandma and I would butt heads on now. And I'd be too scared to tell her. But um, I grew up Catholic and it was, you know, somewhat strict. And the one thing, and I, I look back on it and I'm not Catholic anymore. I do not believe in... Um, and by the way, if you are, that's okay. Like I'm okay. Don't worry. No, no, <laughs> anyone, this is a message to anyone, anyone like that pr- wants to practice religion and stuff. I'm a hundred percent supportive of that. As long as you're not hurting or harming anyone, I don't think anyone should be told what they can and can't believe in. Correct. And, yeah. yeah. But I believe like, and this is ironic maybe, but, um, I'm a, I was a big, Bernie Sanders guy in 2016 and 2020, like I worked on his campaign and volunteered and such too. And there was one thing that he said and it stuck with me. And it was, if your kids are hurting, my kids are hurting. If you can't afford a doctor that affects me, we must remember that we're all connected and we're in this together. And that is human solidarity. And to me, that is such a reflection of how I actually feel. And I had never heard it articulated in a way that resembled, um, how I felt. And if we think about us as a collective society, we all want the same thing. We all want to eat. We want a place to live. We want time to enjoy ourselves and we want to make sure that we have we can provide for our families, right? And ourselves. And we've created this culture of like more, 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 more consumerism, more, 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 more that having money or getting rich is like the actual American dream. But the reality is, is I believe that we will always have wealthy folks. We will always have working class folks. We will always have people that are struggling, but as a society, if we come together, we can pick up the people that are struggling and give them basic human dignity, having clothes, having a job, having food for their family, taking a vacation every now and then to unwind, not working excessive hours to the point where you lose friends, you lose family. You don't get to spend the quality times that make us human together. And that to me is my religion. And that is how I think and approach everything. And that's people first. Like we have to put humans first. I love that. Yes, that's so true. Um, also the golden rule, do unto others as you would want and others to do unto you. You're right. And that's what I was going to get to. And I, I lost that, but I was going to say, that's the one thing that I read in the Bible that is real. If we treat others, how we want to be treated everything's going to be just fine. Yes. Yes. World peace. Yes. (laughs) Let's start it. Yes, I love it. (laughs) Cool. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Um, Do you want to, anything you want to plug or or say that you're working on? Uh, Give your social media. You know, yeah, I'm on uh, Facebook. So it is... True Eden Toothpaste. So it's T-R-U-E-D-E-N Toothpaste. Same thing for Instagram, True-Eden Toothpaste. And then on TikTok, which I recently just started, oh it's uh, at True. Uh, yeah, I love that. I'm so bad at social media stuff. I don't know how to do it, but it's fun, okay? <laughs> it's the same thing, True underscore Eden 
But yes, you know, come see the website. You know, it's uh, www.true-eden.com. Read the story there and just, you know, I'm just honored that I'm here. Thank you. And if I can change a smile at a time, heck, I'll do that for the rest of my life. That's what really matters to me because I'm also about people. I love to love. That sounds crazy. I I love love that. Well, thank you so much for coming again. And all of those links are going to be down in the description. So check it out. I'm endorsing it. And I promise you, like, there's no payment going on here or anything like that. I even bought my last tube of toothpaste. So support Leslie, support your oral health. And everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Leslie, have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you. You're awesome, Nick. Bye. Thank you for joining me on another episode of Conversations with Nick Thompson. If you enjoyed the show, be sure to follow us and leave a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. Links can be found in the description below, and we can't wait to see you next time.